Hi, this is attorney Michael Pariente here with attorney John G. Watkins. He's of counsel with the Pariente Law Firm PC here at the Howard Hughes Center. We're in our conference room today and we're going to talk about roadside exercises, as John likes to refer to them. The police and the prosecutors call them FSTs, field sobriety tests. Now, John, I read a study done in Clemson University in 1992 by Dr. Spurgeon Cole who indicated in their experiment that officers who were watching motorists on video performing these tests, that these officers 50% of the time incorrectly said that the motorists were impaired when in fact they were not impaired. Now you are an expert, correct? I am. I'm certified through the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration as an expert on the field sobriety test. Now tell us about what is the problem with the field sobriety test? How can they be attacked uh, as defense lawyers? What can we do to attack them? And, and why are they even allowed if they have such a high error rate? Well, first off, uh, what has happened, the original study on uh, field sobriety tests was done in 1977. At that time, um, there were uh, 102 people that the officers said that were impaired when in fact 47% uh, of those were unimpaired. The reason that there is a problem is that these roadside tests do not indicate impairment. The studies were based upon giving an officer an opinion as to whether he had a .10 alcohol level uh, or more or less. That was the cutoff line. It's, uh, the studies show that they were never designed for impairment, yet they're treating them for impairment. That's why uh, the police are, you know, unable to do, uh, that is, determine whether someone's impaired or not because they have no, they don't show any impairment at all. And the reason they want to show impairment is because nobody can do these. Uh, who can stand, you know, with one foot in front of the other and stand there for the length of time the officer's giving you instructions uh, and walk heel to toe, turn a certain way, uh, walk back. Uh, the Russian gal on the, 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 the balance bar, Nadia, okay, she wouldn't be able to do these things. So they're, they're just wrought with problems, but the reason the government likes to use them, that's just something that they can bring in the court to try to convince the judge uh, that your client's impaired when they have nothing to do with impairment. Now, you said that often a person can have three mistakes when they can be graded on 93 criteria and still fail the test. For example, if you look at the walk and turn test, you know, there's nine steps down, there's nine steps back, you have to walk heel to toe, you can't step off the line, you can't use your arm for balance. When you add up all the things that a person can be graded upon, so for example, if a person doesn't touch heel to toe one time, okay, they consider that they failed that, you know. So there's 93 things that you can do wrong. and they have it set to if you do two, then you're impaired. So basically, if you get a 91 out of 93, that would be an A in any school that I've ever been to. And that, you're impaired. But that would be an F. Yes, that's an F. Interesting. Yes. John, thanks for joining us. And of course, if Thank you've you, been, Michael. my pleasure, if you've been arrested for driving under the influence, you're being investigated, don't hesitate to give us a call. Come sit down with us in person, or if you're calling from out of state, just give us a call. Let's talk about what we can do to help you.